I'm now going to introduce um, a, another friend uh, of everyone in this room, uh, Congressman Kevin Brady, who um, has received appropriately leadership award from WIDA in the past and has been a tireless worker on behalf of trade and many other uh, important issues in his leadership positions at the Ways and Means Committee. But in addition to being uh, just a delightful human being, um, Congressman, you have been a great friend of trade. So I welcome you to the stage to present our next award. John, thank you for John, thanks for your leadership. Um, thanks to everyone here who is here tonight, to WIDA, to Steve, Stephanie, to WITF, to Ted and others. Um, I know how valuable uh, your leadership has been on trade. I think I've worked on 12 of the 14 free trade agreements we have in place today. Uh, we've all worked together on a couple TPAs, a, a China and a Russia and a few PNTRs. Uh, America would not have the freedom to trade without those leaders who are in the room tonight. So first, thank you for your contributions. Yeah, please. And so let me get this out of the way. Um, while there's arm twisting on Capitol Hill, Ambassador, uh, I did this in the congressional baseball game. Um, yeah. Uh, so as you know, I love playing, I, I love free trade, and I love baseball, and I love tax cuts. So um, don't ask me the order. Um, so I do for Republicans, as you know, I play second base, I bat second, and our team comes in second during the game. That's uh, no coincidence, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I did have surgery this weekend. This is my first couple days in a dress uh, suit and here's what I've learned it is very hard to tie a tie uh, impossible to button a button down and there's some things even your friends won't do I, I've learned that uh, I've learned that yeah is that on your card I bet that's not on your bingo card so what friends will do, though, is stand up and fight for free trade. So that was a great segue. You got to admit, you got to give me that one. As, as we know, the freedom to trade, uh, one of the key freedoms we enjoy as a country, it is the, the key to prosperity um, and growth. Uh, but it's not assured. And as we know, uh, there's many times you simply have to fight for it. So opening up new markets, new customers for our businesses, tearing da down barriers. Ambassador Bacchus, thank you for your leadership in China and your leadership in the Senate as well on free trade. Uh, yes, please join me there. And getting tariffs removed, it's no easy task. It does take fighters. We need members of Congress who are willing to go to bat, willing to take charge, and are willing to speak out when needed. And there is no one in Congress today who is more dedicated to the fight for free trade than the incredible Congresswoman from Indiana, Jackie Walorski. <laughs> Jackie hails from Hoosier country. She will call herself a happy Hoosier, and she wears the values of her district on her sleeve. I, I know firsthand she's been a fierce advocate for manufacturers across Northwest Indiana. When the administration first announced steel and aluminum tariffs across the world, as well as tariffs on a broad range of products from China, Republicans on the Ways and Means Committee were clear. We said we agreed. China's unfair and unscrupulous treatment of American companies and workers has to change. But we also said that tariffs are taxes, that lower is better and zero is best, and that, and that any new tariffs to be effective must be narrow and targeted to avoid harming Americans. 
We insisted on two things, that the administration exempt countries that trade fairly and that they establish a timely and workable product exclusion process so U.S. companies could get tariff relief if they could make the case. And right away, Jackie, you reached out to USTR in a positive way and the Commerce Department equally so to make the case on behalf of Indiana manufacturers for why the product exclusion process had to be improved. I guarantee you this, you can call anyone in the administration from Ambassador Lighthizer uh, to Secretary Ross and others and they can tell you exactly how Jackie is feeling on this day. <laughs> and that's a good thing. She's relentless and never backs down from her conviction. She's not one to shy away from details either. What I appreciate is that she does her homework thoroughly and effectively. She digs deep into the weeds. She learns the issues in its entirety before taking the next step. And whether we're in a committee hearing or a meeting one-on-one -on -one with the administration, Jackie asks the tough questions that need to be asked and answered. Surface-level answers just don't cut it for Jackie Walorski. She presses and pushes and with both a smile and an utter command of the facts. And because of that, manufacturers in Indiana are able to compete and win around the world. As former chairman and now ranking member on the committee, I always appreciate having Jackie on our dais. She has a commitment to growth, desire to see Hoosiers and Americans succeed in today's economy. She's always willing to take the lead and always willing to help move our pro-growth policies forward. And while we're proud to honor her tonight, as we all know, great members can succeed only with the help of great staff. Matt Dankler, Jackie's chief of staff, is a talented, yeah. He is talented and a dedicated professional who deserves our appreciation here tonight as well. Jackie, for those of us who work with you, it is an absolute honor to work with you. It's even greater blessings uh, to be able to call you my friend. I know you'll continue to do great things for Indiana, for our country, and for the freedom to trade. And it is a special pleasure uh, for me to present the WIDA Congressional Leadership Award tonight to Congresswoman Jackie Wolorski. I can think of no one more deserving. Jackie. The difference in height between uh, Kevin and I, I've been accused all week of, of twisting his arm. And I swear it wasn't me. He's telling you the truth. He heard it in baseball. Thanks so much for this honor tonight. I am so excited to be here. You are a rowdy group. I've never been here. I know some of you, not all of you. But I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, if we were on the House floor, you'd be gaveled down. They would tell you, uh, take your conversations outside and like clear the deck. But it doesn't really bother me. And I'm glad to, that you're all here. You're experts. I'm honored to be among you. You guys know so much more about this stuff than I do. I was elected and I never imagined in my wildest dreams I was gonna be working in the arena of trade. And um, although Indiana is the fifth largest exporter, and in the state of Indiana, we're a model, we do all things well. And so um, I ended up, I worked hard. A lot of you helped me get on Ways and Means. But I'll tell you what, what an honor it's been to be able to meet the, the leadership of this country, to be able to be at the table with these folks and to make my points known, uh, be able to back them up 
and I'm pretty tenacious about making sure what I need to happen has to happen. So um, my friend that is sitting down here who is fairly new with uh, USTR, I told him a couple of stories uh, about Lighthizer and I and our relationship and how it's grown over the last year and a half. And, and I told him, I was like, probably, probably best you came now, not like a year and a half ago. So anyway, I also want to say about Mike Dankler, if you're not... <laughs> Mike, stand up. Mike, stand up. He is the king of trade. So I want to tell you all in this place tonight, if you are not receiving Mike's newsletter on trade, you need to be receiving Mike's newsletter. So he's sitting at table 21. Uh, talk to him when you leave here. It's every single thing you want to know and you're wondering about up to the second on trade. It's an incredible update. That's our service to you. We fr thank you so much for your help. I also want to just turn back to um, Kevin Brady for a second. Just for a second, because I just want to tell you what an honor it is to serve with a guy like Kevin Brady. I wanted to get on Ways and Means because I wanted to work with him. He's a leader on trade. He's an incredible great steward of the committee and its traditions. I'm only in my second term, but I feel like I've grown and learned so much thanks to Kevin's wisdom and experience and his ability to grasp issues that are so important to America. And to my friend Susan, Susan and I are like the women of trade, right? We get invited, we get invited to go everywhere. So we kind of like pack it up in the suitcase and when we get invited to go somewhere, we go, we have great stories, you know, we, we love the ability to stand up here and talk about the fact that we're doing things as very strong women in this country and I'm in the minority of all minorities. I'm tw there's 12 of us, I think. And so for me, it's a great honor to have, I came in with Susan, we came in together and we've been good friends on the same committees, really the whole seven and a half years that we've been here. So I can't say enough about Susan. We are always partners. Usually if my name's on a bill, her name's on a bill and vice versa. And also my huge thanks to Ron Kind and to, um, to the other folks that, that have helped us so much. Joining Ways and Means, in 2016 was a tall order. The committee was poised to be at the center of nearly every priority for the new administration, and I wanted to be there. I wanted to be involved in tax reform, health care, and trade. It was like stepping on a treadmill with the speed and incline already set at 11, and it was like, buckle up, here we go. And I thought, this, I, I want nothing more than to be at this and to, to get in, a, in an issue that's going to move fast and fairly unknown to me. But I'm so grateful to have a front seat at this point and a chance to fight for my district in Hoosier State through all these debates, especially on trade. Indiana's second district is home to all sorts of commodities you may not have ever heard before. Obviously, we do corn and soybeans, pork and dairy, and ducks, the leader in this country, and eggs because of the ducks. It's also one of the largest manufacturing districts in the nation. We make almost all of the recreational vehicles that you see on the road, RVs, and the industry is booming. And the industry is now opened a door to millennials and now will be booming for the next 30 years. So I'm very excited and proud of my district. We have major boat and trailer manufacturers. If you own a pontoon or know somebody that does, 85% of those are made in our district as well. We make Humvees probably the coolest thing for the Defense Department, and have been a leader in defense issues as well in my district. All those issues require steel and aluminum, lots of it. So it's not hard to see why I ended up in the trade world. We're ground zero for end users. I recognize there's a variety of options in this room regarding Section 232 and 301 tariffs, but I do think there's a general agreement on the need for a process to exempt products or inputs that aren't made here in a sufficient quantity or quality. <laughs> to achieve our shared goals, we needed a scalpel, not an ax. Before I talk about exclusions, I want to start by thanking the workers in the trenches at Commerce and USTR and for your patience with my tenacious attitude. <laughs> And to all of them that have been taking in thousands, thousands um, of exclusion requests. They have a tough job. They deserve credit for doing what they did with the resources they had. 
That said, I have voiced concerns from day one that Commerce's exclusion process for steel and aluminum is cumbersome, at the least, inefficient, inconsistent, opaque, and unfair. We've been successful, though, in securing changes to the process, including extending retroactive relief and instituting a rebuttal and surrebuttal process. But there's still plenty of work to be done, especially when it comes to understanding why Commerce approved or denied a request. So our work is not done, and we are as tenacious today as we were before they rolled back the tariffs on 232. I'll continue to fight every day to clarify the process for requesters and objectors, to reduce burdens on those filling out those forms, evaluating the paperwork, to understand the reasoning behind approvals and denials, and to advocate for fairness, consistency, and transparency in these decisions. I've also pushed USTR, if you can imagine, I did push USTR to set up an exclusion process for list three of the China 301 tariffs, which is now up and running. Again, while that's progress, I do hope to see USTR take additional steps to streamline the overall process, to reduce the burden on companies requesting exclusions and the staff evaluating them, including concepts like automatic renewals for approved exclusions whose circumstances haven't changed. You could deliver that yourself to the ambassador, thank you. The threat of auto tariffs. This was a big one. We ha I had more people texting me and coming into my office from all over the country that wanted to come and see me and they wanted to meet Mike with the fear of auto tariffs. It was amazing. The, the threat hanging over my district not only was just to the home dealerships and suppliers, but because tariffs could have unintended consequences for RV manufacturers too. The tariff code doesn't distinguish between a part that goes into a car versus one that goes into an RV. These concerns have led me to the conclusion that we need to reform the way Section 232 process works, giving the Department of Defense a primary role in evaluating the national security threat and Congress to have a say in the final outcome. Not everybody's as wrapped up in this stuff as Susan and I, but if you talk to other members of Congress, you'll find they share a lot of the same concerns, but may not know how to, what to do with it or where to go to find a solution. That's why one of my goals all along has been to give our colleagues a way to respond to their constituents' concerns. That wouldn't be possible, again, without Ron Kind and Terry Sewell two great friends of mine from the other side of the aisle on Ways and Means Committee who have been strong and effective partners in authoring letters and bills. Together, we've helped channel concern into action, and I'm so grateful for their work in this fight. You know, every, it seems like every time something was rising in trade, we, uh, Mike and I would come up with a letter, and we would get somewhere between 150, 200, and 250 lines signed on the paper. And you know, sometimes I would just call the ambassador myself of USTR and say, guess what's coming your way? <laughs> and he, sometimes he would say, yeah, how many people signed it? Oh, hundreds, absolutely, because we, want, we absolutely want solutions. But life isn't all tariffs and exclusions. I look forward to the day I can cast my vote for the USMCA now that steel and aluminum tariffs have been lifted for Canada and Mexico. NAFTA was long overdue for an update, and I'm glad President Trump followed through on his promise to modernize the agreement. Ambassador, Ambassador Lighthizer and his team at USTR did a great job negotiating USMCA. You can tell him that too, because I need the other done. All right, <laughs> this agreement will help farmers, manufacturers, workers, consumers in my district and across the country. It dismantles trade barriers, sets new standards for areas like digital trade, and levels the playing field for American workers. Passing the USMCA will keep up our nation's economic momentum, and I do certainly hope we can get that vote soon. Susan, you need to deliver that one. I know I'm up here at the tail end of your dinner. I know you're a restless group, and I know you have a nightcap thing coming. So I wanna close, so I, I wanna close with this. For everyone in the room, I wanna say thank you for all of you and all your industries and all the folks that you serve, for all the signatures and letters and co-sponsors for bills. Thanks for sharing your stories and your, and your, your partner stories and, and your folks' stories about the effects of tariffs. Every signature 
every co-sponsor, every story has helped us make the case. We now represent an entire nation of stories because of how hard many of you in this room have worked to represent your people. More importantly, those stories delivered results. At the end of the day, I've never seen a partnership like what this has been. A learning experience for me, I've learned how to leverage, I've learned how to um, connect with and work with the president and all the shareholders at the table, had many opportunities to stand up for all of us in this room. And I just can't thank you enough for this award. Honestly, this award belongs to, belongs to every one of you. You're the experts, you're the ones that we call, you're the ones that call us and advise us of little things that we can do to make this process better. So to all of you that have so long been involved in trade, thank you so much for the award. Thank you so much for what you do. And I'm gonna gavel myself down like what happened the other night. I am vacating the chair. And to all of you, have a great night during your nightcap.